My story comes at a time when there's debate in Washington over health care reform. Most of us are wondering how it's going to affect us. And granted, we don't want it to change because either our employers offer it or we haven't had a problem using it. So let's get this straight. My family has insurance. We got all kinds of insurance. Car, home, life, health. We're probably overinsured. So health-wise, we're covered. What could go wrong? Well, in July of last year, my wife says to me, I think I'm dying, which is concerning, but not really alarming. <laughs> because you see, five years ago, she told me she had West Nile virus. Turns out she was pregnant. <laughs> e either, way, either way, life changing, right? So she's got my attention. After a call to her doctor and a trip to urgent care, they sent her to the hospital for an ultrasound. Turns out she had an eight centimeter cyst on her ovary. Krista met with the surgeon the following day who confirmed the diagnosis and told her the ovary and tube had to be removed. Krista called her insurance broker to make sure she'd be covered, only to find out that her employer had been pocketing her health insurance premiums, right? And that they had lapsed two months prior. Now, now the man who stole my wife's insurance money and let his policy lapse was not just an employer. He was the best man at my wedding. I was the best man at his. I'd known him for 20 years. He was part of a Northern Colorado Bernie Madoff style Ponzi scheme and apparently he needed the money more than us. Despite his actions, we found a way to pay for the surgery. Unfortunately, it wasn't a cyst. It was a tumor, it was cancer. I hope nobody in this room ever has to receive that phone call because it's a, it's a drop to your knees, can't breathe, kick in the face and hope someone's around to catch you because you're going down. <sighs> I <laughs> I flew home as fast as I could to give my wife a hug and figure this whole thing out. Since we didn't have insurance and we were prepared to pay with cash, the price dropped as much as 50% across the board. Okay, sounds better. We borrowed money from our folks, applied for loans, and drained our savings. We prepared for the next step. It was surgery and it was drastic. Total hysterectomy, appendectomy, lymphadenectomy, omentectomy, and loads of biopsies. The surgery went well, and two days after my wife was in, recovery, we got the lab test spot back. She was cancer free, it hadn't spread. That's the good news is. Bad news, now we're broke. I'd been thinking of a way to do a fundraiser, maybe a cancer sucks party or sell cancer sucks t-shirts. After doing some research online, I came across the story of Sadako and a thousand paper cranes. It's a Japanese legend that if one folds a thousand origami cranes, you could be granted the wish from a crane, that of long life or the recovery from an illness. That's perfect, except I'm not folding a thousand pieces of paper. <laughs> I'm an artist, so I decided I'd paint a thousand crane paintings. I got busy painting cranes, drawing, painting, drawing, painting. While I was doing that, I recruited my ghostwriter to write a compelling letter about our story. After all, he was my brother-in-law, and this is his sister we're talking about. So with the first 53 paintings I posted on my website, sent his letter to everybody in my Facebook page, and... Uh, and we started receiving emails. We started receiving emails from friends, orders from PayPal, and stories from strangers. My wife and I sat in front of the computer that day crying. Crying about the stories of cancer won and lost, crying of the kindness of strangers, and crying because we were going to be able to pay our bills. In the first two days, I sold 60 cranes and we raised over $6,000. Since I sold the first painting November 17th, I sold 170 cranes and raised $12,000. We're nearing our $15,000 goal, and I've, I only have 750 paintings left to paint. Maybe, maybe folding the pieces of paper would have been easier. The sales changed our lives, lives in ways we couldn't imagine. We're fortunate to have been selected to speak here and share our story, and who knows, maybe even start a foundation. So what's the lesson here? How can we enlighten you? The truth is, our system's broken. In our case, that seemed pretty obvious. We played by the rules and got burned. Maybe reform should come from the health insurance companies themselves instead of government, but we couldn't wait. Government-run health care may seem like a bad word, but in our case, it saved us. For instance, the CICP we qualified for reduced my wife's hospital stay from 25 grand to 600 bucks. Without that help, we'd have lost our home and we'd be over 60 grand in out-of-pocket expenses. The real kicker here was our community. People are good. We discovered that accidentally. Somewhere, somehow we inspired them, whether it was the love for my wife or the fact that they received a, an original crane for their donation. It made people extremely generous. And for that, we're forever grateful. Thanks. <laughs>